Yeah. So Jay, we're here to talk about the uh, the match you just shot, which uh, again uh, we opened the show with. Uh, Justin beat you. Unfortunately, you got second place in open division. Um, and this was the uh, Sons of Liberty Gunworks uh, Carbine series, which is one match. Which so I think it's funny they called it a Carbine series, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's plans for more. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a uh this is a what a two day um and I think there's what 12 stages and it's uh a just a, a, a carbine match rifle. They have different divisions here um that encompass like almost everything in in the carbine world. So they have uh let's see 22 LR heavy metal uh limited open PCC and TAC ops. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so that was at the Ranch TX over there in kind of around the Eagle Lake, Texas area. Mm -hmm. Um, Mostly, well, I say mostly, probably half and half bay versus terrain. Um, There was one, two, I guess it'd be technically two jungle runs, and then the others were either in bays or um, new areas that they that they picked out that were just kind of a straight shot down a dirt path, not really jungle run. Um, some 360 base stuff, a shoot house, and then a long range shooting off their uh, connexes back on their long, long range area. Nice. And so you have um, a, a history of this match has been going what for three years now. So you've shot it all the years. Yes, I believe. Yeah. Got it. And it's you've done pretty good in the past. Yeah, I was uh, I was defending champ this year <laughs> in in open division in in open. Yeah, did you shoot tack the first year? Um, or have you always shot open? I thought I thought there was only two years. To be honest, mm. am I mistaken on that? I thought there was three. Oh no, you know what? There is three because uh, Tilky had uh, a picture with uh, three trophies. Yeah, I saw that, and that's why I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So, <clears throat> all right. So, Ranch TX, uh, uh, full carbine match. So, uh, question um, you mentioned the uh, long range stage earlier. Is there a lot of uh, opportunities for long range at the ranch, or is there just that uh, that one area that's on the, the back side of the uh, the range? Yeah, it's just the one area. Um, so, basically, one long range stage. Well, sometimes they put two out there because they do have two connexes that are built up. So, like, um, you're shooting off the top of connex boxes same impact um, zone yeah it's technically they have it's same impact zone yeah um they technically have like two lanes of berms one one lane shoots off of one connex and the other lane shoots off the other um the shorter one goes out to i think it's four or five and then the longer one goes to like 1100 got but, it but essentially yes you're shooting in the exact same area and what kind of distance did they do on on this match? So we went to 500 on the long range stage here. Okay, and and then like I said, just one long range stage. Is that right? Yes, just one long range. Okay. So what's so, so I think like having like a a carby match, it's like a one gun kind of thing is really cool. Unfortunately, this is like a little bit a little bit outside of driving distance for uh, for me. Yeah. Um. Currently, but the uh, uh, the concept I think is really cool. And uh, I think PCSL is doing some cool stuff in uh, St. George, which is, ironically is almost the ex- uh, same distance away from, from me. <laughs> like <laughs> both of these are in a um, some sort of weird tri- uh, triangle that's the exact same driving distance away. But um, but yeah, like the uh, the one gun option, I think, or excuse me, the one gun uh, format, I think is really cool. Uh, it does make it a an easier match to uh, justify flying to as well because you don't have to bring like three guns and three gear, uh, three sets of gear and sh- stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, for me, it's only an hour away, so anything at that location, mm-hmm. I'm obviously gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, um, it's funny you brought up the multiple gun thing though because you know it is <laughs> URL rules. So I personally brought three rifles with me just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you had you had joked about bringing a, a six five Creedmoor too because uh, it's in the rules, and well, I haven't read that rifle switching part of it. But yeah, so uh, to clarify so, on that, you can't do a caliber change. You can, uh, okay, that's that's what can. I thought, but then you yeah. kind of had me questioning myself. I did too, but yeah, I was clarified. It you can you cannot do a caliber change, but you can change. You can swap out rifles all you want as long as they fit in your division. 
Right. So you brought the proverbial uh, golf bag full of rifles. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, so, uh, tell us real quick about the rifles you brought and then, uh, you know, kind of describe what the, um, I guess, the open division format of the rifle that you ended up shooting was. So I actually ended up shooting two rifles through the match. but Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. I But I ended up settling on, I shot one rifle for two stages and the rest with the other rifle. So I brought my normal three gun build that I had for this year, which was just an 18 inch, um, you know, an 18 inch rifle that had all my Tony system furniture on it and had a razor one to 10 <clears throat> with an offset uh, razor as well. And so um, I also brought my, what the other rifle I have built for tactical games, which is just a 16 inch. Uh, it has a proof carbon barrel in it and uh, just a Viper one to six on it. And the only difference where I changed it from tech games configuration was I just put a, um, a VG six break on it um, instead of the flash hider. So what I ended up doing, I shot at the first stage cause it was a shoot house. So I wanted to use my lighter, you know, quicker, shorter rifle. Um, so I did that. And then the next stage we shot was long range. So I took my three gun rifle up there and shot it. Um, I believe I shot the next Next stage, I sh next two stages, I shot with my Tech Games rifle again, um, just because there was a lot of movement and it was lighter. And then I shot one more stage with the three-gun rifle and decided I was shooting the little one better, so I shot at the rest of the match. Um, just in case, I also had my 12-and-a-half-inch Zion with a Spitfire. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, didn't need it. I didn't need that one for anything, but so yeah. I it's it seems so so strange to uh to swap rifles based on the stage yeah um just because typically like that's like verboten in uh in three gun yeah. um how was it what did you think so i mean to be honest it's kind of silly um i i, I should have just run the 16 inch the whole match mm -hmm. you know, I have, even on long range yeah even on long range because i've got it i've got it dialed in for for long range dope and it shoots good at long range as well um and just whatever, for whatever reason, after I shot a couple stages with it, I just was, I was shooting it better, faster, you know, um, it was just the right, it was the right tool for the job on this one. So I just should have shot it the whole time. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's one of those things like <clears throat> you, uh, you think like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to game this. There's this opportunity to game, but then you kind of like focus or maybe you're this way, maybe not, but kind of focus a little bit too much on like the, uh, the trickery or the gamey portion rather than like just executing the act actual fundamentals with what, you know? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, again, I should have just, the, the one rifle would have worked fine for the whole thing. Um, but I was, I was just kind of trying to have fun with it, to be honest. I wouldn't, not, not that I wasn't taking it seriously, but not taking it too seriously. I was like, you mm -hmm. know what? I'm going to bring three guns and I'm going to use them all. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, on, on the on the one hand, it's like, yeah, it, it is it is more to manage and more. Um, it's kind of a gimmick, but on the other hand, it's like, yeah, kind of fun anyway. Yeah, exactly. might as well just having a yeah. good time. And but you know, just sometimes, just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a solid lesson on that right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so. Tell me, tell me more about the, uh, about the stages. Like you mentioned a shoot house, like, uh, kind of describe what the, uh, um, the layout of the, the range and what kind of stages, uh, they had there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the layout of the range, um, you know, they've got, when you come in the entrance, you drive past a couple of roads that kind of shoot off the main road. That one, the first road you would take, you turn on, that takes you back to the long range connexes. Um, if you keep going further in the second road, you turn on that, there's a big wide, you know, tack bay. You go into the back there, there's a 360 bay. And then a couple of areas that they, they carved out for this match next to that. Uh, and then as you go in further, there's one, there's another big bay that they were using for the zero bay. Uh, and you go walk behind there, the jungle run areas. And then uh, keep going. There's, you know, there's, just regular bays set up in there. There's another 360, another couple wide bays, and a couple smaller ones. Um, so the shoot house stage was basically there was you walk in the doorway, there was a hall sort of straight, 
and then there was three rooms off to the left side of that hallway. Um, you started off shooting a couple of steel that are about, I think they're usually about 80 yards out there out one window. Um, you got hoser paper in the left three rooms on your way up to the last window. Mm -hmm. And then you got four more steel in there from about 50 to 70, I believe those were. Um, so just a fast little burner stage. They put a couple of no shoots up in the, in the rooms between the papers just to, you know, just to keep you honest. Mess with your offset. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, yeah, so, so the, uh, um, when you hear like, okay, well, there's one long range stage kind of, you just think like, oh, it's just a burner match. But then, um, you mentioned 80 yard steals. So there are some other skills involved other than just hose and paper, right? Yeah, definitely. Cause so they make up for lack of long range stages by increasing difficulty on some of the targets. Mm, okay. So, uh, I don't know if you ever shot any of these double T post hanging targets before or not. Oh yeah. So you got one T post, there's a T shaped bracket on top and there's a, a target hanging on each end. So they'll put a small round one and a small diamond shaped one. And when you shoot one, the other one starts flapping around everywhere. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that, that doesn't help. <clears throat> and those, you know, they'll use those targets anywhere from, you know, minimum safe distance, 40 yards or so out to 70, 80 yards sometimes. Um, <clears throat> they've also got these little lollipop targets they like to use that are, that are just a real thin, strip about two inch i think about two inches wide with a round three inch circle on the top of it um those this match we shot uh we shot those through a barricade and you know the barricades got i think about seven holes through it well you had to shoot those through the holes you know one target through a hole then go to the next hole shoot another target Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of work your way through. Well, that one ended with a spinner, or not ended, but there was a spinner on that stage. So you, know, you got slant ports and one square and then another slant, a couple horizontal ports. And so it was kind of fun watching everybody try to figure out how to go through that. And uh, I worked through it just the easiest spot to shoot out of. I shot the smallest target. <laughs> <laughs> The next easiest spot, I shot the other small target. I just worked my way up in size through the difficulty of the ports. So the hardest port, I shot the biggest plate, <clears throat> which was one of the horizontals. Are you shooting like a, a VTAC barricade? Is that what it yeah. was? Yeah. And uh, so then I ended up with the spinner through the bottom horizontal port where I was basically prone with my rifle horizontal. And people kind of questioned why I did that. Well, one, I'm prone. Um, two, the spinner is the biggest plates that I'm shooting on the stage. Even, you know, even though they're, I'm shooting it horizontal and just hold on the edge, you know, mag side and I was fine. Right. Now I did whiff a couple, but that had nothing to do with position or offset. <laughs> that was just, you know, it's you, huh? for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there was, and then there was one other stage that we did barricade. We had double barricades. They were, you know, small end to small end like that. And in the back of the bay, there was um, like a C zone, two C zones, one on each side. So you had to go through one of the barricades. You had to shoot it. Was it six times? I believe it was six. So you shot it, you know, through every port on that barricade. Then move to the other barricade, shoot the other plate through every port on that barricade. Gotcha. And so um, there's 181 people at this match. And yep. going down the, um, I guess the, uh, what am I trying to say? The uh, scores, when I was doing the scores, just trying to look mm -hmm. at the uh, the people uh, that I recognized on there. Obviously, so Tech Ops, uh, we got, you know, Taylor Olhausen uh, won it. Tilke was second. Uh, Britton Morris is on here. Um you know, first place open, Justin Morris, Jay Christensen, and then uh, limited Aaron Hayes, Eric Weiss, uh, PCC, RJ Breeze. Um, I don't know, Ernesto Rodriguez, or maybe I do, just don't remember. Um, but if you, and then, you know, heavy metal optics, you can see here 22 LR. Uh, of course, the breezes are on there as well. Um, but if you, if you look down, like there, there does end up being quite a few names we know and a quite a few names uh, that I, um, you know, either can't recall or don't know. 181 people at the match. So how would you describe the match? Is it like all um, 
uh, Jersey shooters or is it uh, a bunch of tack people? Is it a mixture of both? What's uh, what's the feel like? Um, you know, it's honestly, <clears throat> it's honestly, um, mostly kind of mostly feels like a bunch of middle league guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's the typical group of of the central to south Texas, you know, guys that shoot competition a lot. Um, and then just some, you know, kind of um, weekend warrior guys too that, you know, just just come out there because they're in Houston and they heard about this rifle match from their buddy or something. It's an easy match to get into. It's easy to participate because, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's only one gun, right? It's one gun. It's an AR. Everybody in Texas has an AR. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it's an easy match to participate in for sure. Yeah, I guess the uh, everybody in Texas has an AR thing really does play into it. Like, I laughed at that, but that really does play into it, right? Because uh, with, like, for example, USPSA or 3-Gun, um, USPSA, you have to have, like, specialized equipment to fall into a uh, division. 3-Gun, same thing. This This match, I mean, there's, like, you know, seven divisions, and pretty much anything will fall somewhere, right? And it's only one gun, and yeah. there's not a... I hate to, I don't want to, you know, minimalize it, but it's like, just hit the targets. There's not like loading a shotgun or, uh, you know, a ton of other things to think about. It's like, get a stage plan, shoot the targets. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's, and I said, and I said, everybody has an AR. There was a pretty good mix of other, um, configurations too. So, oh yeah. What'd you see? So, I mean, we had a couple of, you know, AK guys on our squad shooting with us. Um, they were shooting five, four fives. Nice. We also had another guy shooting a um, 308 Galil Ace. No kidding. Uh, yeah, and we made him. We kept making him go last so he wouldn't bust the targets for the squad. <laughs> Let him pick targets between between squads. Um, surprisingly, he didn't break anything. <clears throat> and then um, I heard about some. There was an FAL. Um, Sweet. I know there was some other stuff, and I, it's just. It's escaping me now. Oh, some yep. scars. That's uh, cool too. Yeah. Some like the HK. I know they're, they're technically sort of ARs, but they're like the HK 416. 416s, uh, yeah. But in but in 308, whatever that one is, I don't know, mm. 516 or something. Um, there were some machine guns, which, you know, guys obviously shot select fire or uh, single semi auto. Mm. Full semi auto. Um, was that. <laughs> Like uh, like mill, yes. le kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, like duty weapons. Got it. Um, every configuration you can think of, from irons to red dots to you know one to tens. I think I saw somebody with a five to twenty five. <laughs> like, oh no, shit! A little, a little much for this one. <laughs> you did really good on one stage. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know they they work in um. Uh, you know, the match works in a bunch of, I'd say tests or, mm-hmm. um, you know, typical, typical stuff that we're not usually doing with, you know, doing the drop a mag and HVT target kind of thing. And, um, you know, just smaller targets through ports and off different barricades and things. All right. Well, that, so that's a really good point. So for, first of all, uh, Jay, who put, who puts on the match? So it's, Technically, it's the Sons of Liberty Gun Works. Actually, right, so that's a sponsor. Do they that's like the go up stages so and design stages and stuff? The, the ranch itself is responsible for putting the match on. Okay. Um, it is under URL rules currently, and, you know, Jeremy Reed was the match director. Okay, cool. Um, and then he had, you know, whatever staff he could get to, to help work the match. So he was he was essentially building stages. I know he had some help from... Uh, several people and I, from what I understand, I wasn't at Kalash bash, but some of this stuff was sort of left over from Kalash bash too. Okay. Well, you know, another carbine match, right? Yeah. So. That was just two weeks ago. So, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't fault them for reusing some of the setup, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, so the, the reason I ask is, uh, you know, you can, as, as seen over the years, like matches have like a signature on them by who puts them together. So that's why I was curious, but, um, looking down the, the times on the stages, like, um, it's, it's pretty interesting to, to see, like, we don't typically see this, especially in Texas, like uh stage 10 
mm-hmm. you know, you've you posted up a uh, a 1083 on it. Like that's a fairly short stage for Texas, wouldn't you say? Right. Yeah. So if you also notice the points were 20 points. Mm-hmm. So that was a double point stage as well as so that was technically stage 10. Um, and then stage 11 below it was also a double point stage. How does that work? So they just, it was just worth double points. So they just declare it double points or something. Yeah. So it was a standard stage, like stage 10, you start on a table, rifle and mags, load your rifle, shoot a, shoot a, uh, steel, you know, Ipsic six times, reload, shoot it six times. Mm, okay. So it, they did get into like gun manipulation and some other stuff that we don't typically do. Yeah. Pretty much just on that one. Um, yeah, that so that standard stage there, and then you know, like the other ones with the barricades and things, sh- testing your positional shooting, testing uh, canted rifle shooting positions. Um, of course, people find out their gear is not very not very well suited for shooting through barricades when they've got their barrel resting on things, or their handguard <laughs> won't go through, or the the flashlight and the laser they've got attached to it won't go through the port, so they're you know, their flash hider or muzzle brake is blowing plywood off of the walls. <laughs> there was there was definitely some barricades that were going to need some remodeling after the match. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the flashlight uh, thing. So, you know, in, in three gun, um, I guess, like typically in, in any carbine match or not any carbine match, but um, people who shoot them a lot typically run slick, right? Because there's enough uh, shit out there to get your stuff hung up on anyway rather than just adding another <clears throat> excuse me a flashlight or vertical foregrip or angle foregrip or whatever mm-hmm. but then when you start mixing in uh like law enforcement military who use uh their guns for different purposes or um tech guys who use their guns for different purposes um but they do want to come out and compete then yeah you do have those uh those things in there and uh it can kind of be have a pain in the butt because you realize like okay well my my uh flashlight may not work in this one specific instance but does that mean you rip it off and throw it out or does that mean you just continue but you know that if i ever have to shoot through a, a vtac wall then i need to uh uh take other precautions well and you know and and i think um I don't know if it, I don't know how many times, you know, police and military get into the situations where they're trying to shoot through some kind of small hole or port like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But hopefully if that's something that they really run into, then they can sort of use that as kind of a learning experience to how they might need to, you know, may need to tweak gear a little bit or just how it's set up or something, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's all like tools for the toolbox, right? So like yep. you have that one extra experience. And so now you can, you know, apply it to other things that, that may come up. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's, there's a, a match down in Colorado in Pueblo. Uh, I won't bore you by uh, searching it, but um, uh, it's like hosers carbine match. And typically it has like a lot of uh, uh, great representation, like a, a monthly match as far as excuse me not representation participation and sorry i've been watching a lot of stuff about the marvel mcu so representation (laughs) stuck in my head but (laughs) so they have a lot of participation and uh it it looks like a a really fun match from the videos i've seen the guy uh hoser that puts it on um is a uh really accomplished uh rifle shooter he's been doing it for a bunch of years but uh I've always just lived really far away from it. <laughs> like right yeah. now, it would be like five, six hours to uh, go do it for uh, a monthly match. But uh, someday I'm gonna have to, you know, bite the bullet and go do it because uh, carving matches are are just fun, man. Yeah, it was definitely fun. It was nice to, especially for us. It's a nice change to have just one gun to mess with. <laughs> yeah, you feel lighter. Like when you're going to a match, like God, do I oh, yeah. have everything? Yeah, I was carrying two rifles and all of my mags around, and I was like, man, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah when, when you can have like everything you need for a match on your body like that's kind of nice right yeah yeah definitely yeah so the uh um all right so we've got some short stages we've got some uh mid stages and then uh, uh long stage um let's see stage three was that like a jungle run sort of thing stage little... three stage Longest three was the yeah stage three was the stage with the um with the spinner 
Oh, okay. Through the, uh, through the barricade. So that so was kind of one. Takes much longer. Yeah, that was one of those where you were just, you know, there there wasn't. I think, um, I think Justin did that one, and I want to say like fifty something. I think like fifty nine. So he did it a little bit faster. I had some. I did have some pickups and things on the uh, spinner that took me a minute. Mm-hmm. And I think the the light was playing with it, so I believe I shot one one of the times I shot it. I actually slowed it down. <laughs> Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. That's uh that's always a good thing. So, uh the uh the spinner, so anytime anyone comes up on a spinner like their first match, it's, it's always throws them for a loop. It's like a mm-hmm. Texas Star, right? Yeah. Remember first time seeing a Texas Star and just like, "Oh, crap. We have to shoot that with a pistol." Right. And uh now it doesn't even seem like a big deal. But if you, you know, if someone's listening, they've never shot a spinner before, um you know the uh the idea is like it has a pivot in the middle and you shoot the top and shoot the bottom and then you have to turn it over so do you have any any kind of uh i don't know advice for for newbies on spinners or something you would uh tell someone if they um asked you on the range what what your advice would be to attack the target well the first thing i would tell everybody is stop trying to put two or three shots on one plate as it's going past because um while it can work it usually doesn't because you end up just missing two or three shots at it instead of putting one good solid hit on it. Especially if you're new. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I take one shot at each side. I don't I don't try to double tap them. Um, the only time I try to double tap a star is if it's a very close shotgun star. Yeah. That's the only time I'll do it. Um, so, uh, star or spinner? Spinner? Yeah, you said star. Spinner. Yeah. Spinner, spinner, spinner. Sorry. <laughs> so... so do you typically start with the small plate on top or the big plate on the bottom? Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot. I'll throw one at the small plate on top and then so kind of get it start rocking. And as that bottom one goes back, I'll, I'll shoot at it. Um, I do go top bottom, you know, as it's coming back around. Usually I also use 75 grain rounds when I'm shooting the start, the spinners. <laughs> Why do you do that? Heavier bullets, more energy, less shots. Um, Cause you can very clearly, uh, even like 55 grainers, and then the guys that were shooting like 40 grain 545. Oh, uh, yeah, it was very, it's very, very clear that they're using light bullets and the energy is just not transferring. Ha, huh. um, so 75 grain. I use, you know, use my heavier bullets on spinners. Um, usually it's top, bottom, and a lot of times I can get it in about four shots, maybe five total. Um, and again, if I shoot it and it slows down because I was, you know, confused on the rotation with the light transfer or something, then, you know, get a couple more in there. I want to say I maybe took, I have to look back at the video, but I think I maybe took like six, like six actual hits mm-hmm. to rotate that spinner this time. Got it. Yeah. When, uh, when I shoot a spinner, I guess like the, uh, the advice I would give someone is like make a super stable position as Absolutely. stable as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, and depending on the, the distance, uh, and this is what I've noticed the farther out the, um, the spinner, the more stability in a position, the match director will give you. Right. <laughs> if, if it's a little bit closer then they're going to try to mess with you by making you shoot off of a, you know, two by four or a barricade or something like that. Yeah. Um, do you, do you use reference points behind the spinner um, if they're available or how do you do that? So I, I end up, what I end up doing is trailing or I guess chasing or yeah, if you can get a reference point, um, do that. But I find that, um, I usually don't have time for that in my brain anyway, to, to get a reference point. So I'm just following the stem. So as it's coming up, I'll actually be, I'll be chasing the stem. Mm, and once the okay. plate, once the plate is where I want it, I'm just doing a follow through. Like if I were shooting a a clay target on a shotgun or something, I'll just follow it up, shoot it, you know, follow through and then come back down to the bottom, doing the same thing. Follow the, follow the stem of the target down until the plate presents where I want it, you know, break my shot and follow through. Gotcha. Okay. Trying to minimize the movement of course, but you know, yeah. You know, uh, another thing that I see uh, new people doing that I would advise against is, uh, once they've hit one side of the target, uh, they'll try to hit it again, like to push it more. But um, 
typically you're, you're using the the momentum of the spinner and you're just encouraging it it's like you yeah. know smacking something as it's flying by rather than you know uh pushing it like you're pushing a door open right yeah yeah you're talking about like if it'll stall out at the top and they try to push it over well uh so um let me see if I can do this on camera. So if you're listening, maybe you want to go to YouTube, but if you're say, this is the top of the target and if you shoot it, right. So shoot it and it moves like this a little bit, they'll try to shoot it again right here, but yeah. now it's already wanting to come back the other way. Right. And so, like you said, it'll stall out, mm -hmm. uh, but they, and I've done this too. So, you know, don't feel bad if, if uh, this is your, <laughs> your method, just change your ways. Yeah. But, uh, they'll they'll think like okay well i hit it there i'm gonna hit it again and i'm gonna see the same amount of movement but mm -mm. now you have the you know the force of the lever and the other plate fighting against you right yeah definitely definitely shoot it while it's moving and don't wait for it to be perfectly flat facing you to shoot it get it let's see where i'm going here i'll give you the whole screen there you go as it's so as it's coming past Start, you want to shoot it. God dang it. <laughs> shoot it when it's still angled away from you slightly going right. away. Shoot it about here and get that momentum going. A lot of people are waiting till it's here to shoot and they'll either hit it here, which is probably right. okay. So, so it's you're using your hand, your whole hand as like the entire spinner, right? Not your, this, your wrist. Okay. This is the plate. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is just the plate. So the, it's swinging, the, the, the hinge is at the top here. So oh, okay. Like gotcha. This. Okay, cool. This is the bottom plate. So shoot it here as the momentum is going back, not waiting for it. And a lot of people are pulling the trigger here, but it's hitting the plate when the plate is already facing away. Right. So, so they're energy... pulling the trigger when it's, when it's vertical and yeah. it shouldn't be vertical. It should be like this. facing toward you a little bit. Yeah. So, cause people are shooting it here and it's glancing off and that energy doesn't carry through as much either. Yeah. Yeah, and then again, you're fighting the uh, the other plate and gravity and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but the uh, so that's that's a really good uh, piece of advice there. Um, you also have to take like if if the if it's farther away, you got to take bullet travel time into account. And so, yeah, farther away than it is, you um, you know more more your shots count. <laughs> but in my opinion, but then uh, you have to shoot it earlier the farther away it is as well because you got to give the bullet time to travel from your gun to the the spinner yeah even though it you know it seems like it's instantaneous but it's definitely not right right yeah <laughs> i mean 2900 feet per second still takes a minute when stuff's really far away so yeah. and this was a this was probably about an 80 to 90 yard spinner okay yeah so it wasn't close <laughs> no no and that uh so we oh, gosh i can't remember what the one was at memorial three gun we had uh this position out of a pickup truck and uh it was a pretty comfortable position which which was nice mm -hmm. and then uh um there was other targets back there and then we finished on a spinner i want to say that was like 75 or 80 yards i'd have to I'm, I'm not sure i'd have to ask someone else but um it was one of those things where it's like, oh, thank goodness, this thing that this thing is uh, is fairly close, right? And, uh, and that one uh, had like a pretty decent, um, uh, berm backstop kind of thing. And mm -hmm. when we shoot stuff in uh, at matches in Colorado, they got to or like the the uh, spinners, they got to be up against a berm if if it's rifle or pistol. Yeah. Um, but in Texas, like I've noticed that they'll put spinners out in the middle of nowhere. And so there's no reference point behind it uh, for like seeing where that plate's going to be. So your approach method, I think, is uh, is pretty good. Probably something you need to practice. Yeah. And even though this was in a bay and the spinner was against a berm, well, guess what? The ranch berms are covered in thick grass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bushes and weeds. So you can't see the Not dirt, a whole lot so of feedback. You, you had no reference. And speaking of that, so uh, one of the funny things that sort of happened on our squad um so kalash bash they were using these little round firebird exploding oh yeah mm -hmm. so um <clears throat> mike white size was shooting one of the stages and had two steel up against the berm or hanging actually staked into kind of the berm and he shot one and all of a sudden on the ground one of those things blew up <laughs> i guess it was a leftover from a leftover bash in the grass and it blew up and these like green sparks and smoke went everywhere and so we thought somebody was messing with him. And uh, I was like, that's kind of messed up on the clock. But 
uh, he didn't even miss a beat and just kept on going. He got done. He was like, did y'all see that? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, what the hell? Uh, it's such a white sides thing. You just keep right. <laughs> Yeah, those uh those little firebird targets are kind of fun. We had a bunch of those at uh, an event I went to a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, they're they're pretty cool. Yeah, just a is. small explosion, nothing to like, you know, destroy anything, but pretty cool little feedback. Yeah, I was I was I hadn't seen one in person yet. I was like, oh man, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Add to cart. Yeah, definitely. Like I need a pile of them face up. <laughs> Yep. I want to. I want to get a handful and toss them in the air and shoot them with a shotgun, like you would do with clays, you know. Yeah. So that's that's where my uh, my brain pause was there. I was like, do those work with shotgun? And I honestly don't know, um, because I've only ever shot them with rifle. So, well, I will find out. You let me know. Somebody has a bag of leftovers. I'm going to go raid them. Nice. You know they they look like they fit in the center of a clay, like a clay target. So just what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I would uh, I would expect that they work for that. I don't know. I even still have uh, I have some of those flash um, clay targets we were using to have the powder in them. You know, so oh yeah, supposed to, supposed to like blow up and powder mm-hmm. when you. Uh, so I might stick some to those and try it. There you go. I'll get get a, a video. Little, get a little powdery explosion. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so Sons Liberty Gunworks carbine match. What do you think, man? Yeah, I dig it. Uh, it's a fun match. Um, I joke about, you know, I'm shooting at that range so much that it's starting to be starting to feel a little repetitive, but you know, cause there's, they're doing what they can with the the property they've got. And they've, they did come into a couple of new areas this year. So, um, you know, they're trying to find new things, new ways of doing stuff to, keep it keep it changing yeah um, but you know there's only so much you can do with a certain amount of property right yeah that's for sure i mean they i feel like so i've been to the ranch a couple of times and i feel like they definitely do a really good job with what they have yeah and to me they have like a ton of property but then if you're if you're running that number of matches on mm. that cadence then uh you'd kind of like more like triple c did just seem like there was unlimited amount of places and and targets and features that we could uh shoot at you know yeah so when you're coming from that sorry go ahead i was gonna say when you're coming from that like everything else seems pretty small yeah it's it's unfair really yeah (laughs) Uh, the ranch is a great facility it's a beautiful place i mean it's conveniently located it's got hotels and restaurants nearby and the staff there you know matt shockey and all the other um all the other guys there they they do a great job putting stuff on. The place is really awesome. Um, yeah, the staff at the range is is always cool. I yeah, like I like going there. Yeah, if I didn't if I didn't have property to shoot on down here, I would uh, certainly have a membership there. 